Making a steam plant using three Cotswold Heritage steam engines. Part 5. Fitting the displacement lubricators. This episode was going to be about making the top caps for the condenser and the water tank. I want to make the top caps to match the aluminium top cap on the boiler, but I haven't got any aluminium of a suitable diameter and today is a bank holiday. So instead, I thought I would fit the displacement lubricator with the built-in valve assembly to the engines. This item that I've just been working on, I've actually been re-threading it, is a PM Research 90 degree cast elbow. I always have to use a quarter by 40 threads per inch tap to re-thread these elbows because the threads are too tight. I would assume this is because the American standard of quarter by 40 is probably different from the British one. When working on very small brass engines like this, you have to be very careful, because even though the thread that exits the engine is quarter by 40, the thread that goes down into the block of the steam chest is a lot less than that. I've replaced the fibre washer with a copper washer, and now all I need to do is rotate the fitting into the correct position. And if you're a beginner to this sort of thing, remember this is a very small brass model engine. Do not apply too much force. At this stage I have a choice as to which way around I want to fit the lubricator. So just to see what it looks like, I'm fitting it in this position. I removed the drain plug so I could rotate the unit. And I quite like this, I like the way that the tap lines up with the cylinder. The more I looked at this lubricator in this position, the less I liked it. I even tried putting a PM Research elbow on the end of the valve. But no, this is starting to look a little bit like a trumpet. I don't like the piping to be too fussy, so I'm not going to mount the lubricator in this way. Instead, I'm going to turn it round and mount it with the valve facing the operator. We all make mistakes, said R2-D2 as he climbed off the pedal bin. And now when I refit the lubricator, it looks a lot better. So I think on all of the engines, this has to be the orientation, with the steam valve facing the operator. Time now to fit the valve to the vertical engine, also known as ISIS. And once again, as usual, I'm re-threading the elbow with a quarter by 40 tap. It's worth it though, because I think that these very small cast elbows look really neat in a model steam engine application. On this engine, I left the fibre washer in place because it was in the right position. And you will notice that I'm not putting much pressure on this elbow. Too much pressure will shear off the fitting. When I screw the tap into the elbow, unfortunately, the main body of the lubricator fouls the steam chest bolts. What I need to do is make a special nut that fits on the end of the valve before it goes into the steam chest. And for this, I'm modifying a union nut. I've machined away about a third of the union nut, and here I'm using a tap in the tailstock to position the nut accurately in the chuck to allow me to drill down the other end of it. This twist drill is quarter of an inch in diameter and I'm just drilling part of the way through so that when the nut is mounted in place, this nut will also support the valve. On the right of the picture is the adjusting nut and on the left of the picture is a union nut very much like the one that I machined the adjusting nut from. I always coat my threads in Loctite 542 and that way there is no chance of them leaking. And you can also now see why I took the trouble to drill the end of the nut so that it looks like it's part of the fitting, rather than it just being a plain old nut on the end of the tap. Now I can easily screw the tap into the elbow by hand. Then I use my barco spanner to just nip up the nut against the elbow, so the displacement lubricator is well and truly fitted to the engine. Time now to fit the lubricator to the third engine, this one's called the Aerial, and the fitting is a bit different to the other ones. I cannot put the lubricator inboard because it just won't fit, and even with this piece of pipe, it's too low down. So what I need to do is make a special bent pipe that lifts the position of the lubricator. I need to bend a piece of 5 seconds of an inch pipe using this very small pipe bender that I have. And this is a product from Microcosm. I've put their website address on screen so you can have a look. They do make some really nice things. All I have to do now is cut this piece of pipe to the correct length and silver solder on some union fittings. And thanks to a bit of video editing, this took no time at all. I didn't bother showing the silver soldering sequence for this piece of pipe, 
as I've shown the silver soldering process many times in many different videos. But if you don't know how to do it and want to have a go, I recommend watching Silver Soldering for Beginners. What I'm doing in this clip is temporarily fitting a union nut over the threads to stop them from being damaged. In this clip I'm showing the approximate positioning of all the parts on the baseboard. And the very meticulous viewers out there may notice that the aerial engine is the wrong way round. This I assume is the front, the part that says aerial on it. But if I put the engine this way round, this piece of brass on the front plus the flywheel masks everything that's good on the engine. Just to be on the safe side, I thought I would contact the owner to find out which way round he thought the engine should go, and he agreed with me. He said he'd rather see all the moving parts clearly. What I'll probably do though is turn the fancy brass part round so you can still see the word aerial, and I think this will look okay. Unfortunately though, at this stage, I got some dirt on my finger. So before any viewers write in and tell me I've got dirty hands, I'm going to go and wash it thoroughly. And that's about it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.